Well, I think the other part of the night that was interesting is examining the politics of boxing. We know that the big promotions, Golden Boy promotions and, and Top Rank, they have their guys. Uh, they put them on the yes, cards. Yes, they do. And they want to build them. So Golden Boy rolled the dice a little bit with Danny Jacobs. I think it was about time. He came in 20-0, 17 knockouts. I mean, he's the guy, the next big star at uh, middleweight. They put him in against an undefeated Russian. And, boy, from the get-go, I thought the Russian kid looked bigger and was walking right through everything Danny Jacobs threw at him. Yeah, Steve, you know, here was the thing. I picked Jacobs, but I said before the fight, I was sitting next to Dan Rayfield from ESPN.com, and I said to him before the fight, I don't like Danny Jacobs as a fighter. I don't think he's as good as all the hype he's getting. But Golden Boy really just fed him a bunch of cupcakes. I mean, he, you know, he fought nobodies uh, coming up. And so he's getting all these first-round knockouts, and, it, you know, some people were getting excited by him. But I looked, and I said, you know, he's not beating good guys, and I didn't see in him the kind of things that I would normally like like to see in a prospect but i picked him to win the fight because i thought well there's no way golden boy is going to put him in with somebody that they think is going to beat him uh when he's going for a middleweight title and they know he hasn't fought anybody yet to prove himself so just based on that i had only seen a little bit of youtube video on pure like he hadn't fought in the states as far as i'm aware uh uh, before and it it fought Kofi Jantua and that was a fight that was on YouTube. But other than that, uh, not much known about him. But uh, you know, Danny, uh, you know, I think got exposed, uh, and, and it continues a disturbing trend for Golden Boy, where they have never really developed anybody from beginning to world title. Um, you know, the the world titles that they've gotten have come from somebody else, you know, uh, that was developed by another promoter. Um, Jacobs was, you know, looked like going to be their guy. And then the way it was handled post-fight, to me, I, I tweeted it on the Yahoo Live blog, I thought was was reprehensible. Yeah, it was totally bizarre. Uh, they didn't even talk to Perog. They bring Jacobs down to Jim Lampley. Uh, you were closer to the ring than I was. Did, did they did they kick Perog out of the ring? Was he underneath the ring? Where, where did he go? Yeah, he, he stayed in the ring for yeah. a while to, you know, as somebody get interviewed. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to, I was saying, I was motioning like, yeah, hey, I want to talk too. Yeah, I mean, interview me. I mean, he was there. I, I was like, you know, what's going on? Why aren't you talking to this, this kid? I mean, he, he scored what might be the knockout of the year. It was an unbelievable knockout. And he did something, Steve, that I want to mention because I think he deserves credit for it. And I don't know, I, I didn't see the broadcast since I was there live, but and you know, I don't know if people picked up on it, how much they talked about it, but when he went in for the final sequence, uh, uh, Jacob's back to the ropes, and Pirog went in in a, in a left-handed southpaw stance, and Jacob saw that, and, and I think it was the first time in the fight, and just before he threw the punch, he kind of very quickly switched and then threw that right hand over top of a lazy jab, and it landed right on the button, and, and uh, Jacobs was down and out. But that, you know, was a, a, a really slick maneuver, and, uh, you know, he deserves credit for that. And here's this poor guy with a terrific, terrific knockout, wins the middleweight title, one of the historic championships in boxing. You know, if you think about boxing, you think of the three big titles, and you always think of the uh, heavyweight title, of course, number one, the middleweight title, number two, and the welterweight num title. Uh, Pirog wins a middleweight title, and HBO just completely ignores him and acts like it didn't happen. And, and I want to say this because this should be – he he had a very good interpreter. His interpreter came to the post-fight news conference and was an extremely good interpreter. And HBO has had interpreters for Spanish-speaking fighters. They've had them for all uh, sorts of language fighters. So you can't tell me that they couldn't have got this guy on. And I just think that that shows a cozy relationship with Golden Boy and HBO where the Golden Boy fighter lost and HBO is trying to already rehabilitate him. And to me, that's wrong. You know what? You're, you're covering the sport. Cover it like a sport. Act like you're a journalist. Put the put the winner of the fight on. If you want to interview both, great, but make sure you put the winner of the fight on, not the loser who just got knocked silly. I totally agree. It looked awful. Uh, I know you couldn't hear the feed as cleanly as I could, but uh, and you know we like Jim Lampley, but he went right into repair Danny Jacobs image mode. Uh, he talked about the untimely death of his grandmother, which you know is sad. I'm sure it was a distraction, and then also started to pad the whole thing of hey, this happens, you know. Good prospects lose fights. You're going to come back, kind of selling the audience on, hey, this kid still has something. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, hey, 
It, it was tough. I agree, and I have much sympathy for Danny Jacobs and his family. And uh, you know, that's a tragic thing to have happen. And he was raised by his grandmother, so I, I certainly get it and understand. You know, that it, it held heavy on his heart. But think of how many stories in boxing where the person fought with that on their mind and they won. That's why they won. They were so, you know, they had it. Um, it's happened many times before where fighters have fought under similar circumstances. I, I was really appalled by the treatment, frankly, and I just thought that they were just totally cheerleading golden boy and that's not what they're supposed to be there doing your obligation as hbo is to the viewer the viewer is paying you that you know 59 95 or whatever it is to get the hd uh, broadcast and you know your obligation is to the viewer not to uh, bump up golden boy for the next fight 